You are still watching Where is Now College Radio Stations Worldwide play an important role in students' education while also providing a diverse um, schedule of local news, music, sports, and interviews. On the first Friday in October, World College Radio Day celebrates the impact these stations have on their students and audiences. The day also invites new listeners to tune in to experience college radio for the first time and aims to raise greater international awareness of the many college radio stations operating worldwide. This is so interesting. I was having a conversation with someone yesterday and he was showing me the, he had just done a, a complete proposal for a university. Mm -hmm. They want to do both t their, their in-house TV channel and their radio channel. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, that's interesting. Most people that, you know, eventually went on to do things in the media, especially with radio, they'll tell you that their first job was in the in school, the school right? yeah. yeah radio no i like the idea mm -hmm. i mean we have a couple in nigeria that is doing good for themselves um unilag radio is one um i mean there are a couple of them mm -hmm. some of them most of them are not as popular as unilag radio because they've been able to like i mean it's lagos states now mm -hmm. you expect that kind of a boss to come with their own platform but it's good and i think he also sort of shows what should happen in every other um mm -hmm um course of study right now because it seems like those who are doing mass communication sort of have an edge oh yeah because before you come out of school you are, you're, you're already, already fact, you're already big. reporting you're already a media mm -hmm. person you understand um journalism to a large extent so it's good and i, I love it I, I really do do love the idea and i'm glad that there is a day to commemorate um, that initiative. So yeah, kudos absolutely, to them. Absolutely. So I wish I can go visit a radio college radio it's station one open day to visit i mean you just know? going to you know like, I, I have someone there so we can you yeah, can really go go just go and do a courtesy visit that would yeah. be nice <laughs> that'd be good that would be nice okay all right um, so what do you find in the news my story um if lady is watching i know she's very upset about this story <laughs> well it's about ikiti states her states um they're saying this these are the teachers now pay our benefits before you leave office ikiti state teachers tell fire me um, the story reads on Premium Times that the teachers in Ikiti State have urged outgoing Governor Kayo Defiami to settle their outstanding benefits before the expiration of his tenure on 15 October. That's how many days? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next the teachers Saturday. are owed several months of unpaid salaries and gratuities of retirees, but are hopeful that the Governor would still perform magic before the end of his tenure. Um, the teachers who were at a ceremony on Wednesday in Adrikiti to commemorate the World Teachers Day commended Mr. Fayemi for initiating laudable programs for the educational sector. Um, but of course, they went on to um, hope that these this, um, monies will be paid. Um, I don't know why we are comfortable with owing people in this part of the world. Um, you expect someone to wake up in the morning, come to your establishment, work from morning till night. In fact, we are even the ones that are pushing against work from home, right? And it's still the same society that would be comfortable to all people one, two, three, one year salary. Six I months, mean, one year. I don't, I don't understand, but mm. I'm hoping that this call out or this appeal that they are making will touch his heart to sign whatever he needs to sign before his um, October 15, but it's it's pretty short mm. and it's painful. Mm. It's really painful because we work because we need money to live, right? Mm. So if you're holding these monies, how do you really expect that they are doing their job? Mm. I just want to mention quickly that, you know, you know, I had taken the story yesterday about Shore calling out Jagaban. Mm. Sure, you saw that he's back. Oh, he's back, country. he's back, speaking his so It's, it's English. important that when we say one, we should report <laughs> another one. Do we to have to keep the, video? the balance? I don't know if they had the video, uh, but I just wanted to quickly mention I that. I like that video of his, the way he picks his, <laughs> his grammars, like. So, welcome back. Baba Baba. Day back. Yeah. Abi? Yeah, welcome. Oti, Oti Day. So, welcome. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, uh, my story is actually very uh, disheartening. I saw a video, um, commuters, you know, someone warning. Uh, it was actually on Libros, Oshoma's page, mm -hmm. warning commuters not to go through a particular road, right? They said, please avoid traveling through Kogi State for now, as it's almost overrun by water. If you see this video, Elsie your heart will be in your mouth. And I remember seeing a video. It said, even Olam rice of 10,000 hectares have been completely submerged by water. 
Lokoja has always been known that whenever the rains come, there is massive, right, flood. I'm not sure it's just the rain now. I no, think no, I'm even saying that. So because saying the, 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 a, the tides and everything yeah, rises and all of that. Yeah, that the dam was opened or something. I, 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 I mean, Whatever I'm not it sure, is, right, there is always this yeah, flood process, issue. So yeah. why have we not gotten to the point where we get the expert, right, to say, how do we solve this problem? Like, look at this. You know, how do we solve this problem? Because this is not only the video that I saw. The reason I'm even talking about this, I saw another video of someone saying that the longest traffic in Nigeria, people had been in traffic for one week, seven days. I think it's somewhere in the east. Wow. So you see truck drivers and everything. If you see one guy that opened his hand, mosquitoes had finished everything that the, everything on on his hand. You would see boils everywhere from mosquito bites. And this is crazy. So that's my it's point. That how do you and expect people still want to travel home and all that? So where where I even took this story? How do you expect businesses? And because most of these businesses are really small businesses, you understand. A petty a, a man that has started maybe a transport company. I just want to quickly do small runs and everything, make small money, feed my family. It is not, it is not even, I don't know how to explain this thing to the government. If we calculated how much we were losing mm. as a state or ha as, a, as a country, just from these kinds of incidences, right? It is in billions, it's in trillions of, of dollars, what we're losing just uh, with these kinds of incidences. So I'm saying that if we had a responsible government, some of these things should have been things in the past because this, some of these things were things I saw when I was growing up. And I'm not imagining that it's still, it's there. still there. It yeah, makes no you. sense. You know? And we say we want to grow economies. Economies cannot grow like this. I have a, a, a product, for instance, that I have ordered and is stuck in this kind of traffic for days. The client is waiting. I lose the customer. I lose face. I, it's, it, the, 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 the loss is unmeasurable. But you see, if we started to count this cost and start to measure our losses, maybe... It will, it will really wake us up to change the status quo. There will be possibility of measuring losses when we even begin to value human lives and then tie that to time as well because you can't be talking to people who don't even value the lives of the people that they are, they are, they are governing about measuring losses because that is almost like, of course, human life is up here and then all that is down here. So if you don't have that, you don't have critical thinking, you don't have processes, you don't have systems, then it seems that it seems like some of these things we we expect is also actually expecting magic, like the word was rightly used in the, in the article mm. I read um, before now. So um, I've gone to a point where I'm not surprised because if you sit down to ask why, how, where, you know, all those questions you need to ask, that you know why these things are happening and you won't be surprised. But it doesn't take away the pain. It doesn't take away the fact that we still hope that things can get better and that we begin to make better decisions because we can't be having the same problem for over decades. Like, it's, Come on. it's crazy. That's all. That note, we'll take a break. When we come back from the break, we'll... Um have money with us and our guests as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>